who comes in the name of our God for glory all honor all power to all glory all honor all glory to I will worship you with all of my heart I will worship you with all of my strength for you are my God yeah. you are my God come on can you just declare you are my God you are my You are my God. 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 You are. tonight we acknowledge you are God we acknowledge you are King we love on you you are everything we have cherish and adore thank you for the things you are doing in this house we will return all the praise all the honor all the glory to you all the name of this great God be praised in Jesus mighty name Amen and amen. Please, if you can, be seated. You are my God. 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 Yeah. You are my God. You are my God. Yeah. You are my 
Ascending and descending. This is Bethel. This is Bethel. A place of encounter. You are seated on holy ground. You are standing on the holy ground. The very house of God. He said, For God is in this place, and I wist not, I knew not. Leko ba ila mana kila mane kata maya ya la barani ya 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 la barani da da di aya ya ya la baba rila mana ni na 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 shala ba ila ala ba rila na di ya ya. It's a place of intimacy. Whether you are outside, following online, no distance. Ala bala temeli na mata barandi la na. Ye la maneta bala parate la maneta ya 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 ya. I see Jesus seated upon the throne. I see his angels moving everywhere. I see his spirit. Fixing things again, no. Hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. Have a young man there. I see Jesus 
seated upon the throne I see his angels moving everywhere I see his spirit fixing things in your life hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne hallelujah to the lamb upon the throne hallelujah to the lamb upon the throne hallelujah hallelujah if you can be seated if you can barata kapati kubana tabari chemeza bronda baba balata de com brasil de tela junta barata balaga bashira de Psalms we just finished a series on the dynamics of resolve and while I had time with the Lord the Lord told me there is still an aspect we need to consider We started discussing how that result is very important for a believer. Very important that your life is productive. However, that your life don't just start producing until you are able to engage the rules of engagement. 
being a Christian alone is not a guarantee that things are going to work out. It's supposed to be a guarantee, but that an ignorant believer has a disadvantage. The Bible says you will know the truth as a believer, and the truth that you know will do what? We set you free. So any believer void of truth will still go through what unbelievers go through. So we examine the dynamics of result. We discussed a few things some weeks back. And tonight, the Lord asked me to discuss warfare. You can title it Warfare and Result. Warfare and Results. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You're the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You're the mighty man of war. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man in battle. You are Jehovah. You are the mighty man of war. Psalm 144 and verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength. So he's the giver of strength. Now the remaining part, if you know how to read, one to read. Which teacheth my hands to war, uh -huh, and my fingers to fight. That God himself is the one that teaches your hands to war. And then teaches your fingers to fight. There is a warfare dimension to result. That there are results you will never be able to get if you are not a warrior. So long as life is concerned, this is a very powerful truth you will have to acknowledge now. That there is a dimension of result you will never have if you are not a warrior. In other words, there are dimensions of result that are not for the chicken hearted. There are dimensions of result that are not for the feebles. There are dimensions of result that are not for the lazy. There are dimensions of result that are not available to you if you are not a fighter. And the reason is this. There is a devil somewhere that knows that the results in your life have the ability of impacting other lives. And he's not going to hold his peace to allow you to have what you want to have until you fight. If you are not a fighter, there are levels of result you should not even desire because they won't come. They don't come cheaply. The Bible said, Blessed be the Lord my strength who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Write down these three things as we proceed. We're going to take our time at the end to pray. I promise to be brief. Number one, that result and success is spiritual. Results are spiritual. Success is spiritual. So if you are not a spiritual person, forget about success. If you are not acquainted with the realm of the spirit, forget about greatness. If you are not acquainted to the realm of the spirit, there are levels of results you will never get. Because result in itself is very spiritual. The Bible tells us that for no natural man can receive. Is that in your Bible? That being a natural man means you do not have a touch with the realm of the spirit. Being natural means all that you do 
um, is, is around this natural realm. You don't have any affiliation. You don't have any connection with the realm of the spirit. So you neither have a connection with God nor a devil somewhere. And for being natural, he said, you will never be able to receive. So meaning the criteria to receiving is that you have to be spiritual. Is that it? Success is spiritual. Results are spiritual. And you have to be spiritual to have it. You are not spiritual, forget about it. Every time men want to produce results beyond their natural strength, they look for a spiritualist. Is that true? That's the reason behind rituals. That's the reason behind Yahoo. That's the reason behind all the things people do to Hamas wealth. So they want to succeed. They have done everything humanly speaking. And this thing is not working. First, they believe it's by hustling. So they wake up early in the morning, sit up late, and the thing does not still produce. Now they believe it's by connection. They do everything possible to know great people. It still is not working. Now they believe that it's just by being nice. They are nice. It still doesn't happen. And then they come to a conclusion there is something spiritual about this. And they are not wrong. That success is very spiritual. You don't have it until you have a connection with the realm of the spirit. This is a very fundamental truth that you should be acquainted with. Number two. That Satan will fight any result in your life. That have the ability to impact the kingdom. Satan will fight any result in your life. Any result. You are attempting to be influential for the sake of the kingdom. Satan will fight it. You are attempting to gather money. To make money to be wealthy to advance the kingdom. Maybe already you know you are a kingdom financier. Get ready for battle. There is a battle. Warfare dimension attached to wealth. I know I'm supposed to be a kingdom financier. If you are not a warrior, you will remain a kingdom financier in your mind, in your dreams, and it will never come to pass. Because there is a devil somewhere that knows what your money, what your resources are going to do to the kingdom. And I, like I shared with you sometimes back, that every time Satan wants to have a plan, he only look at what God is doing, then he derives his plan from there. So if you already know and you've been confessing it, I know I'm a kingdom financier, Satan derives his agenda from your life. He will fight you because he knows that the day you get in there, your result, your, your resources are going to advance the kingdom. And he's always against kingdom advancement. And so if you are not a warrior, forget about it. So Satan will fight it. There is a level of result you get and you begin to evangelize by your result. There is a level of result you get and you become a witness. There is a level of result you get and you impact society. And Satan does not want you to get that result. Apostle, but I'm a nice person. Even God knows my heart. That's not enough. God knows your heart. He teach your hands also to war. If all you have is a nice heart and you are not a warrior, forget it. Number three. Always know this, that there is a devil out there to fight every plan to advance the kingdom of God through your result. That there is a devil out there always ready to fight the plans to advance God's kingdom through your results. So if you ever fold your hands and sit, forget about result. If you ever fold your hands and sit, forget about result. There is a devil somewhere that is angry with everything you are becoming. He will never watch you become influential. He will never watch you become great. He will never watch your life produce result. He knows the effect on the kingdom of God. He knows the effect on humanity. There are people in your village right now waiting for someone that will come and build a school. And already you have it in mind. When God lifts me, I'm going back there to help my people. Satan knows that if you help them, and a young boy there gets educated, he becomes an evangelist to impact the nation. He will, he will have a way of bringing souls to the kingdom. Satan is going to fight you. The problem is not you. The problem is the people you are going to help. So at times the battles we fight, it's not because of us. We fight those battles because of those connected to us. 
there are people now because of frustration they believe god is not faithful they are angry with god angry with everything that has to do with christianity because they believe if god is seeing and watch this they are their are salvation is in the hands of somebody that is seated down somewhere and could it be that you are the one if only you can have this level of resolve that is required to help them out they will believe in one day that the god we serve is faithful and so it's important that you understand that i cannot fold my hands and watch things happen i will have to be at my feet warring and fighting paul said i have fought a good fight right look at the life of john the baptist let me show us a few examples from scriptures john 1 and verse 19 blessed is he who comes in the name of our god and this is a record of john when the jews sent priests and levi from jerusalem to ask him what was the question everybody want who are thou this is what happened when your life start producing results. Please don't be distracted. This is what happened when your life First Corinthians 14 and verse 14. The question the realm of the spirit will ask is First Corinthians 14. How First Corinthians 14 and verse 14. How did you get to this First Corinthians 14? First Corinthians 14 and verse 14. First Corinthians 14. The difference between who, what is your name and who are First Corinthians 14 and verse 40. That is a level of success you will have. First Corinthians 14. Challenge you. Satan will have to challenge you. Already John is influencing his generation. People are running from Jerusalem, Judea, and everywhere thronging to him. And of course, Satan knows. Listen, when the spotlight is on you, Satan also zooms his interest over you as soon as the spotlight comes on you you start rising in business you start rising in career you start rising in finances you start rising in influence satan also comes around you he will never be quiet for some of you you have wondered the kind of battles you've been going through right from childhood what exactly is wrong why is satan on my case listen carefully satan is on your case because god also is on your case There is a warfare dimension. You have to be willing and ready to fight. And that's what we're going to pray tonight. There are people right now, listen, you are long overdue for your next level. So why am I not entering it, Apostle? There is a barricade between you and your next level. And if you are not a fighter, you don't enter it. There are many of us, you have seen it in your dreams. God has alerted you in your dream. You are long overdue. It's time to move forward. It's time to go forward. So why am I not moving? Warfare. There is a devil somewhere that cannot fold his hands. He cannot. Can you take a one minute praying in tongues wherever you are? Jola kabara teketila. Inside, outside, and show you are praying. Lentum bro sabalata kebaradiata. Apara kapa lekete belega baradish. Yemba ro sabalaka barata balakate. Hambre koto pila farate peke litakaya. Hallelujah. Now listen. To tell you that that question was not peculiar to, to, to John alone. Listen. As soon as Jesus showed up. The book of Matthew 21 and verse 23. The Bible said they came also and asked Jesus. With whose authority are you doing these things? You've been healing people everywhere. Everybody is following you. How comes? How did you get this authority? Who is the one backing you up? By whose authority? I want to have results. I want to become this and that and that. Are you willing to fight all the forces? Listen, anywhere you see a man producing results, whether it's in this kingdom or secular world, listen and believe what I'm telling you. That is not ordinary. There is a hand that means there is a warfare dimension. There is a spirit backing them up. 
You don't just rise like that. You are not willing to fight? Forget it. There are people that don't even love prayer at all. When it has to do with prayer, they tell it is like me. I, I don't just know how to pray. If you don't know how to pray, you don't know how to succeed. If you don't know how to pray, or you are the type that don't like prayer, it means you don't like success. Because if it is in this kingdom, you want to have that result. You must pray. You must pray. Except if you want to try something else. Fine. But if it is in this kingdom, you have to pray. No, you have to. Every time I hear a prayer, there is a way I just feel in my spirit. No, don't feel anyhow. It is for your good. David was anointed to be king. He was anointed at age 17. He became king at 30. He fought for 13 years. He fought for 13 years, running from one cave to the other, running around and just fighting unnecessary battles. But then these are the things that qualified him. For many of you, these are the things you are doing right now. It looks like when you are recovering from one fight, you are into another. Recovering from one, you are into another. Why is my life like this? Why is our family like this? It looks like we keep fighting. Listen, do you know that you have been a fighter right from the womb? You were not the only one your father released into your mother. There were more than two million. More than two million. You were the one that won the race. It's an aberration to arrive here and fold your hands and be lazy. You started fighting from the womb. You got here and you fold your hands. Come on now. Come on now. If you are seated here listening or listening from any part of the world, you started fighting right from the womb. Even when you didn't know your name, you started fighting. Now you arrive here, you fold your hands. Are you kidding me? If you fought to arrive here, you have to fight to remain here. No, you have to fight to remain here. I've told you before, you cannot fight a full-time devil being a part-time Christian. So you are in today, you are out tomorrow. You are in today, you are out tomorrow. You don't fight like that. Hope you know that Satan doesn't go on break. Is that true? He doesn't retire. You have to be willing. And we're going to take our time to fight some battles here. There was prophecy on Joseph. But look at the many battles he had to fight. Including in the heart of house of Potiphar. Fighting his way through to remain a man of integrity. There are many things. He, in fact, listen. As soon as prophecy come on you, start fighting. The book of 2 Timothy. Let me show you a scripture. Second, 1 Timothy 1.18 apostle there are prophecies on me god have said this and said that i mean about my life start fighting if god have said that about your life then start fighting otherwise it will remain a dream for the rest of your life believe me the bible said i charge or this charge rather i commit unto this son timothy according to the prophecies that have gone ahead of you everybody read the remaining part that thou by them mightest war a good warfare for having prophecy, start fighting. I saw in my vision that God lifted me, start fighting. I saw a prophet told me I'm going far, start fighting. You don't go far by collecting transport. Start fighting, warfare. Because even Satan loves prophecy. You know why? Prophecy tells him what God is doing in your life. He doesn't know everything. As soon as a word comes, he, he now gets that information and he starts fighting based on that information. So you don't get the word and sit down. I'm showing you now why a lot of prophecies don't come to pass. So a man of God prophesied and you believe it. You went back home two years later. You have not seen the manifestation. You went back home and folded your hands and sat and went to work. You don't get a word and sit down. Paul the apostle said, there are many times I propose to come to you. Philippians, I mean, 1 Thessalonians 2.18. He said, but Satan hindered me. I wanted to come. But Satan hindered me. Other times he said, I fought with the beast of Ephesus. I wanted to conquer Ephesus. I had to fight my way through. And at the end of all of it, he said, I fought a good fight of faith. I have finished my course that is laid up to me, me for me right now, the crown of righteousness. I have fought. This is the great apostle talking. I have fought. Kola barate kebasha. Bantola sabaraka pate koparate ketila. 
Ambrosam Villa Praseli Manata Aroki Balakataya. He said, I bear in my body the marks, the scars. Scars. You don't have scars if you are not a fighter. I bear in my body scars. A lot of people want to rise without stories. A lot of people want to rise without testimonies. What did you conquer to become a woman, a champion? You have to conquer something. Even Jesus, when he came, the Bible said he went to hell and conquered the devil there. Open up your gate, I mean your, your, your head, all your gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? What's the response? The Lord, the Lord mighty in battle. So even Christ was a warrior. For him to have the resort he had, he was a warrior. You sit and fold your hands, forget it. I don't know in this world witches are all around doing they have to be all around you also should be all around there are people that don't like me they are doing everything to ensure i fell you see you only fell when your hands are folded if you make up your mind no devil can stop you no i was preaching somewhere this morning i told them you see if you are a believer and you complain that your next shop neighbor is using charm to do business you are an ignorant believer because the spirit they are conjuring, the one you have, is the father of all spirits. So you don't fight as a believer hoping you will win. No. If you really are a fighter, you fight to win. You fight to win. Not hoping to win. The only problem is that we don't even fight at all. Mention one person in scripture that didn't fight. Everybody, even if you were born in the palace, everybody fought. Fought their way through to ensure prophecy become a reality. So what's the way out? Strategic prayers. Strategic prayers. Strategic prayers. And we're going to pray some of those prayers now. Second Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I mean verse 3 rather. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. He said, For though we walk in the flesh, everybody read it now, we do not war. Meaning, you don't, it's not a physical fight. No, it's a spiritual thing. Although we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Next verse. He said, Now for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh, but mighty through God to the pulling down. Of stronghold next line he said casting down so the warfare even starts from your mind casting down we do not war after the flesh but we are fighters we are certainly fighting Kabaros Kavila the Lord tells you I've sent you into the world of business do you know that most people that are doing well in business are not physical people they are not natural people whether they are born again or not they are not natural people you don't go in there and expect to overthrow people like that when you are you are just normal and natural no no you have to be a warrior there must be something you are fighting for because satan will not fold his hands and watch you rise luke 18 from verse 1 Two more scriptures also and we start praying we really are going to pray it looks to me like what will happen next week is starting from this week and he spake a parable unto them to this end everybody want to read that men ought always to and not so the moment you realize you are a man what should be the next thing you start doing praying if you are a spirit, don't pray. But the moment you realize you are a man, the next thing you should do is to pray. Man, not spirit, man, ought always to pray and not to faint. And watch this. If you are not praying, you are fainting. And if you are not fainting, you are praying. One must be happening to you as you are seated here right now. If you are not a prayerful person, you are already fainting. And if you are a prayerful person, you cannot be fainting at the same time. That man ought always to pray. Now he went on with the parable and described how that there was a judge in a city who feared no God nor regarded any man. A very wicked judge. He didn't 
fear God, he didn't regard any man. It's like the people you are trying to have favor with and they tell you just get out of my office and you go back home crying. You see, when people tell you to get out, they only talk in the physical. You can control it in the realm of the spirit. That's the church here. He neither feared God, no man. And the Bible says a widow also had a case. The widow needed this judge to assist. And then the judge will not do anything. But the woman insisted and persisted. And then the judge says, see, although I know I don't fear God and I don't regard any man, but this woman has insisted. Let me just bring her, 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 her whatever avenger so that she will not weary me. And Jesus was teaching about prayers. That there is a way you can war in the place of prayer. You don't take no for an answer. You hit that door, it doesn't open, you go and come again. I've told you before, not every gate must be open, some can be broken. For he also breaks the gates of brass, is that it? Yes. Not every gate needs a key, some of them need a kick. So it's either you use a key, or you use a kick. The most important thing is that that door must be open. It has to be open. And it takes warfare. Koraba filata, enclosa prefilatesh, nengrata. I've told you before that when you walk around on, I mean, in the daytime, not everybody on the street is a natural person. Are you aware? Some of you have met people and and exchange change. You gave them money and they gave you change, and they were not human beings. You collected change from a spirit being. Some people walking around are not normal. And for you, if you are normal, you have a problem as a believer. You are not supposed to be normal as a believer. In fact, for being a believer or alone, you are not a, a, a normal person. You are not normal. There is something on you that makes the world not to recognize. We are going to be praying. And whatever has stood before you on your next level, that's what we are going to pull down right now. Believe it. Whatever has stood before you and your next level, either spiritually, financially, in ministry, you are going to pull it down. Listen, you will so know that something has happened tonight. Before some of you come back for miracle service on, on Sunday, you are coming back with your own testimony. Believe it. Result is for warriors. It's not for the chicken hearted. No, it's not for the chicken hearted. You want to have results, you have to become a fighter. You have to become a fighter. You have to become a fighter. Not fighting today and tomorrow you are resting. A constant. The Bible says, pray without season. One more scripture. Zemble kola brenten filam brosale be shalabaina Araba koto bikilava broten bles kalo shataya Erandam bronden vles kabarate Jondan dam barosa likete belaka Agrosa vlim bratosa cabriete ketila Anglazo brevila cabrias ke village Rekoto pakata bilagaba rosa blende gradish Elondom bratela vrante bilaska Regodom bra leke bra sabilada ka balande ila Arodo zabeki laba fronde pleska barate Yondom barakle zezi bilata brako remileza Jekete belegatila listen do you know that when people die it's because they decide to stop fighting have you seen somebody that was terribly sick and they were saying things like i can't i can't i can't i can't hold it anymore and finally they gave up they, they tried to be they were trying to fight death they got to a point they could not fight it again and then they gave up you can fight death you can refuse to die I'm telling you, you can so refuse to die. Satan come at you, you tell him, no way, it's not yet time. 
there are things that are not yet handled. I'm, I'm alive to make sure they are handled. For many of you listening to me now, you are the only warrior in your family. I mean, you are the only one standing and fighting for literally everybody. That's why it looks like it's wearing you down. I mean, not positive spiritual at all. You are the only one standing. Help the lady back there. So you are fighting both for your parents, you are fighting for your siblings, you are fighting for your own family, you are always awake interceding for everybody. It looks like the battle is wearing you down. Listen, cheer up, oh child of God. We are going to fight in this corporate atmosphere now. You've been fighting a lot. We are about to fight as a family. Some of you have been fighting battles that are older than you. You only arrive and saw the fight all around. Help them under the anointing. We are about to fight as a family. Certain doors must be open. Certain gates must be open. We have to pull them down. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. And never say it doesn't matter. What is this? Because I know people have listened to all kinds of gospels. Do we have to fight? Jesus has fought all kinds of things. Jesus nailed your sins to the cross. It was not everything he nailed. You have to wake up to responsibilities. Any gospel that gives you right without responsibilities is an irresponsible gospel. You have to be a fighter. You have, even, look at this. Jesus talked to his disciples and they said, Lord, grant that we might sit on your left and your right. Is that in your Bible? Jesus said, the seats are there, oh, but whoever must take those seats must drink of the cup. He asked them, can you drink the cup? And they said, we can. And Jesus told them, you will truly drink it. You will, and they truly drank. Look at the way they were tired. You are not a fighter. If you like, believe any gospel that tells you you don't have to fight. You will be old and watch your life not producing. It's not a prophecy. It's what will happen. Result is not for the chicken hearted. As a ministry, you want to ask how we go to this level? Are you willing to fight the fight? Men don't just rise. Things don't just happen. You have to be willing. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travel, as soon as Zion travel, there must be a travel in order to bet anything. There has to be a travel to bet anything. You are not a fighter, forget it. You cannot bet anything if you are not a warrior. Kobaya Latabasha, Eparande Kosobi Lataba, Lenkra Tepelusa Barateke. Lenta berata balatesh, rata belaka baraba ila na 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 na. Ye paraka balaka to belaka dia, eram brasa bilata, arula para kelas, shombe reke perila kedas. Alleluia. Second Corinthians two and verse fourteen. Lemba rakaba, vilonso biratabaya. Yembe lataba rakabaya. Now thanks be unto God, which caused us always to triumph. Always. He caused us always to triumph. He caused us always to triumph. We are about to pray. And I want you to pray with an understanding. You are not praying and hoping that you are going to win. No. He caused us always. Always. Every time you pray. Always. Rejoice not over me, all my enemies. For if I fall, I will rise again. Do not rejoice. The only time you should rejoice is when I have not prayed yet. When I start praying, no doubt can remain short. When I start praying, no challenge can remain. Jesus 
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We are about to stop praying, but listen to me. For many of us, the battle has been a mindset battle. Even when it looks like you are making progress, Satan will come and say, Are you really sure? He has given you a way of thinking that has limited you. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. Please, is this all your might can go? Help me, please. Can you just take a few minutes and charge up yourself? Praying the Holy Ghost is a prayer meeting tonight. Is a prayer meeting tonight. Is a prayer meeting tonight. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake Rapa <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 Hallelujah. Ephesians 10 from the street where we read he said we do not war after the flesh now he said for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold listen I've told you what strongholds are before a stronghold is a thinking pattern that Satan has built a fence around and he will not allow you to come out of it. Listen carefully. Please hold on, listen for a moment. Have you noticed that any church that prays so much are usually persecuted? Is that true? Listen, any church that prays too much, people criticize them. You see people even pass and like, ah, these people can pray now, wow, and they are laughing. You know why Satan does that? He will do everything possible to discourage you from praying. Everything possible. He will ensure that at three kinds of churches Satan fights. A prayerful church, a wealthy church, and a church that operates in miracles. Satan will never allow you to be blessed financially. Because he knows that he will lose, he will lose control over your life. He will never allow you to walk in miracles. He will do all, all kinds of things to prove that what is happening is not God. Listen, you are going to pray. The first battle tonight is a mental one. 
Lord, I pull down every stronghold that has held my mind captive. Any stronghold, any fortification the enemy has built around my mindset, I pull it down tonight. I begin to think the thoughts of God. I begin to reason like God. Lift the voice and pray. Come and lift the voice and pray. Come and show your praying and show your praying and show your praying. Pull down every stronghold. Repetit a wrong way of thinking that Satan had used to break your mind. Shake it, take 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 it, In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Will I ever succeed? Who asked you to think like that? Will I ever have results in my life? Those are the kind of thinking we are pulling down now. You are not supposed to think it. Because as a man thinking in his heart, our thinking has limited us. Now listen, the next prayer. Listen to the next prayer. Hope you know that stronghold is not a demonic word. Even the Holy Ghost can also build a stronghold around your mind. So there is a right way of thinking you can have and the Holy Ghost can build. For instance, myself, it's too late to think failure. I can never think failure. Will I ever make it or not? Why should I think that way? You're going to pray and say, Lord, by the Spirit of God, I build a fortification around my mind. Satan do not have an entrance. He cannot access my mind. He cannot access my thought pattern. I build a fortification around my mind. Lift your voice and pray. I build a stronghold by the Spirit of God. And Jesus, mighty name we pray. Ephesians 3 and verse 16. 
Ephesians 3 and verse 16. Listen. Listen. The Bible said that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. Everybody remain in line. To be strengthened. We are with might by his spirit in the Listen, there are people that say things like, I am tired though. Me, I'm getting frustrated. Me, in fact, I'm getting depressed. All kinds of things. Do you know what happens when you get depressed and worried? There is no strength in your inner man. And when you lose strength inside, you will definitely fall. When you lose strength inside, you will definitely fail. You cannot have resort when you are weak in the inside. You are going to pray and say, Lord, I apply for strength by the Spirit. I refuse to be weak inside. I am strengthening my inner man. I apply for strength. I apply for grace. Lift your voice and pray. I refuse to be tired. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be weary. I refuse to be exhausted. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse frustration. I apply for grace. I apply for strength. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be worried. I refuse to be exhausted. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be frustrated. I refuse anxiety. I refuse discouragement. I receive grace to move forward. I receive grace to take giant steps. Hallelujah. Listen, from now on may discouragement be far from you. From now on may anxieties and worry be far from you. From now on may depression be far from you. From today you are strengthening your inner man. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now look at the next prayer. Lord, whatever has stood before me at my next level, I pull it down right now. I pull it down right now. Whatever has stood before me at my next level, I pull it down right now. Lift your voice and pray, brothers and sisters. Whatever has hindered me from making progress, whatever has stood before me at my next level, I pull it down by the power of the Spirit of God. I pull it down by the Spirit. Whatever has stood before you and your next level is going down, it's crashing down, it's going down like that one before the act of God. Shakatapa like a 
Hallelujah. Listen, two more prayers. You're going to pray and say, Lord, by the Spirit of God, I take giant steps. Whether in business, I take giant steps. In ministry, in finances, giant steps. In business, giant steps. I refuse it to be limited. That barricade has been down. Pray by the Spirit. I take giant steps. Big things happen to me. Big things happen to me. Great things happen to me. Come and lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer. The book of Acts of the Apostles 12. Acts of the Apostles 12. From verse 1. John Dabila Sabaratea. Now listen. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Next verse. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Next verse. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unliving bread. Next verse. And when he apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Next verse. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Everybody now, the Bible said, but prayers was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Next verse. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, the Bible said the keeper before the doors kept the prison. Next verse. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And with a light shine and a light shine in prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Some chains are falling off already. Every chain that held you bound is falling off already. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind up thy sandals. And he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment upon thee and follow me. And the Bible said, And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought it was a vision. Next verse. Now this is the place our prayer is taken from. And when they were past the first and the second gate, they came unto the iron gate that leaded we are into the city listen the city talks about the place of resort and influence ah huh? city there talks about resort and influence and peter was shot out of the city listen you can be in a city like this city and the city can be shut up against you so you think you are in the city but in the realm of the spirit you are outside the city how do you know you are outside the city when everything you try to do is not working the city has not opened for you yet. You try this, it's not working. You try that, it's not working. The city has been shut. Until the city open up for you, forget it. You will labor. Remember the Bible said, the labor of a fool weary at him. Why? He do not know the way that leads to the city. So he will labor like a fool. Working from morning till night. Nothing is happening. The city is shut. You're going to pray. 
The Bible said we will eat the good of the land. Is that your Bible? You're going to pray and say, Lord, let this city open up for me. And may I begin to... Listen, you didn't come to Abuja to watch people building houses and buying cars. You are here for your own share. You will pray and say, oh God, let this city open up for me. Let this city open up for me. May I produce my result in this city. Lift your voice and pray. Let Abuja open up for me. Let Nasarawa open up for me. Wherever you are watching and listening from, pray. Let my city open up for me. I refuse to labor without result. Let the city open up for me. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah Olubeja. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah Olubeja. I thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah Olubeja,
Don't be still. You don't have to sing. Lift your hands. Don't be still. Lift your hands. Jesus. Jesus. Whatever has stood before everyone here with their next level, now, now is the time. Whatever has stood before you on your next level, now is the time. There are three people, the power of God will come on your legs. When they start running, then it is done. There are three of you, that will be the sign. I will give you a sign. There are three people. The fire of God is coming on your legs. You won't be able to stand it. Please don't help them. Let them not wound themselves or injure themselves. The fire of God on their legs. I'm seeing one of you outside. for you now in the name of Jesus. First, every wrong thinking pattern that the enemy have used to cage you. And over time it has become your confession. Now, in the name of Jesus, we break that stronghold. Now, in the name of Jesus, we break that stronghold. And I decree that from now, may the Holy Ghost build a new fortification around your mind. Every battle you've lost in your mind, may you conquer from now. And in the name of Jesus, receive the grace to take giant steps in this season. What you've not been able to do before, receive grace to do it from now. And I decree and declare right now. Whatever has stood before you on your next level, next level in ministry, next level in finances, next level in business, next level in career, 
I decree in the name of Jesus, like Dagon fell before the ark of God, let that fence fall down right now. Let that fortification fall down right now. Let that limitation break down right now. You go from here and begin to see massive results. Begin to take giant steps in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you be empowered from inside. That weak part of you, that part of you that is so weak and, 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 and soft, I deliver you from it right now. And I decree that the warrior dimension of you will begin to emerge. The warrior dimension of you will begin to emerge. That dimension of you that cannot be discouraged begin to emerge. That dimension of you that cannot give up begin to emerge. That dimension of you that conquers and wins begin to emerge. In the name of the Lord Jesus. From now on, I release you. Go and begin to produce results you've never had before. Let this season for you be the season of giant steps. Giant steps. You will dare what you've never dared before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And if there be any human being fighting you, any system fighting you, they go down before your very eyes. They go down before your very eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. You believe something has happened tonight, give him praise. 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 Kabarosha Rosha Bilada Varata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, while everybody remains standing, you know you are here, you are not born again. And you are saying tonight, I want to make things right with Jesus. Or I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Maybe I have not exactly been serious. Let movement be minimized. And you are saying tonight, I want to make things right wherever you are. I want you to take a bold step, run forward here. I'm going to pray with you. Wherever you are, come. Come quickly. You are saying, Apostle, I'm hearing the voice of God where I'm standing right now. And the Lord is telling me this is my time. Take that step. Come. God bless you, my sister. You don't have to wait for somebody to come out before you join. You can be the very first to be here. Come. You are from the overflow. I'm waiting for you. Take that step and run forward. Don't stay back. Double up your steps and come. God bless you, my brother. Bless you, my sister. Keep coming. Keep coming. I'm waiting for you. You are hearing the voice of God. Don't stay back. You are hearing the voice of God. Don't stay back. Come. Come. If God is telling you to come, don't stay back. Come quickly. Young man, conquer that fight in your spirit now. You are a warrior. Conquer that voice that is telling you to stay back. Fight it. Fight it. Come. Fight that voice. You have to win from now. Young lady, win that war from now. Come. We just talked about warfare. Don't allow that voice conquer you where you are standing. Come. Don't allow that voice overpower you. Come. God bless you. Take that step. Keep coming. On Christ alone, my hope is standing here can you place your hand in your heart even if you are following online you can make this decision from wherever you are pray after me from the depth of your heart and mean it say dear Jesus I believe you are the son of God today I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord of my life forgive all my sins 
And today I receive by faith the gift of eternal life. Thank you for saving me. I'm a child of God now. Amen and amen. Father, I stretch forth my hands and I pray for your sons and daughters. I decree in the name of Jesus, let the name of the Lord be named upon you. Let Satan lose cleanse over your life. As you go from here, go and love the Lord and be established in grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it is well with you. You will never go back to where you are coming from. Be established and planted in this grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you for making this decision. Listen, you are going to follow the young man standing there and they will go with you and attend to you. God bless you. Just follow him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come and celebrate them. Is that the best you can do? Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. God bless you. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please, can you be seated a few minutes? We'll be out of here in a few minutes, but be seated. Outside, God bless you. Be seated. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, three powerful announcements, and then we are done. Our worship summit comes up on the 18th of March. Amen. Now, the flyers are ready, and they are going to be online any moment from this night. Please, you will go and share them, invite as many people as possible. It's going to be a night of intense worship. Say amen. Intense worship, and the time is going to be 8 p.m., 18th of March. We're going to be having... Um, a lot of music ministers in our midst. First of all, we're going to be having our amazing worship team. Amen and amen. They are, they are our host, worship team and the preacher. Say amen. Amen. They're going to be having a lot of time to be a blessing to us. And then from among us also, we're going to be having Minister Bina. Hallelujah. We're going to be having Minister Abraham. Amen and amen. We're going to be having Minister J. Moss. Amen. We're going to be having perfection. And then we're going to be having Minister Paul Lawrence. We're going to be having in our midst Minister Joy Gona. We're going to be having Minister Dogara. We're going to be having Minister Gift Simon. And then we're going to be having Caleb David all the way from Kaduna. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be an amazing time of worshiping. And then you're going to be having Jonathan Shekonya. I saw my face there too. Amen. It's going to be an amazing time of worship, impartation, and miracles. Amen. You don't want to miss it, so invite as many people as possible. And then um, from the first week of March, which is next week, is that it? How many of you have been anticipating March? I've been anticipating March. In fact, I'm starting a special fast because of March. Because something will have to shift in your life and in my life. Hallelujah. Now, I told you that every Sunday in March is prayer, power, and miracles. I think the flyers should be ready by now. Please, can you put it up? While you also share the handbills now to the share the handbills now to the ushers amen now we have um, a few copies of the handbills i think they are a thousand plus or closely two thousand so you can get at least one or two flyers to invite the first sunday which is going to be sixth um, we're going to be having great man in our midst amen some of you know him some of you don't know him he was one time um Koza gratitude right Yes, a very anointed worshiper is going to be around with us to lead us in worship. And then after that, we will have a time of intense prayer and miracles. Listen, something must happen to you in these four weeks. We've never done this kind of thing. If the Lord asks us to declare all of these weeks as prayer, power, and miracle services, then get ready for something. And it will be wickedness to come alone. I'm telling you, not just unkind or nice, it will be wickedness to come alone. We have decided to print flyers. We have decided to have online publicity. Please get the flyers. I hope you are sharing them already. 
don't take more than one or two so that you can reach everybody. But then please ensure you invite someone. It's not for you to go and keep in your house. Some of you will carry it and say it's a mantle. It's not mantle. Say amen. Because some of you can be very funny. Is that apostle this mantle? Let me keep it by my mirror. It's not ma if you keep it there, no grace. <laughs> this is for you to ensure somebody is in church. Ensure somebody is in church. Ensure everybody have at least one or two. Ensure. Are we together? Now, this is not just for you. It's for your entire family. From the first week, we are going to be addressing family issues. Then we'll move them as God grant us grace. Say amen. Say amen. So please, first Sunday next week, come prepared. If you have to fast, please fast. If you have to wait upon the Lord, trusting God for your life and for your family, please do. And I told us that the last of it will be the first week of April, right? It's going to be our anointing service. And I told you that that anointing is the anointing for, for favor and acceptance. Hallelujah. So please get prepared. And then prayer department will be having 10 hours on Friday. They usually come around, yes, for 10 hours stretch. But before 10 hours stretch, we're going to be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we held, I think somebody shared a testimony along that line. We had a, a one-week vigil some weeks back, or two weeks back. We're going to have two days vigil again. This one is not compulsory for everybody, but if you are around, I, I know you are looking forward to it. It's just a time of praying for this city and praying for the lost. It's going to happen tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday. Say amen. We start praying from 12 to 6.30 a.m. From 12 to 6.30 a.m. At times we come, it's just one prayer point. You pray one prayer point for six hours. How many of you have prayed like that before? It's training. So if you have not prayed like that before, join me. I'm around. Join me tomorrow by, by what time? 12 a.m. After our workers meeting by 5, we will trust God to close by 7 so he can go and rest. Then we are back by 12 to pray down till 6 a.m. I told you we have never prayed any year like we are praying this year. Is that it? And if God laid in our heart to pray like that this year, it means some seasons are overdue. And you don't bet them by English. You bet them by, by prayer. If, you, if just English you can speak, forget it. You'll soon be tired. You bet them by prayer. So please ensure you are around. And then our kingdom advancement prayer continues. Every 6 a.m. there are people here praying for the lost. Every 6 a.m. there are people. Some people started, they are gassing out already. We are just around week 9. So if you're already gassing out, your strength is small. For if you faint in the days of battle, what happened? And you're not supposed to gas out now. So please resume back to kingdom advancement prayer. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right, so every worker will meet tomorrow by, by 5. I think these are all the announcements. If you have not gotten the flyer, say amen. Lift your hand. And if you come to service alone, you are not a nice person. No? Ensure you drag. Come with all kinds of sicknesses. We are going to trust the Lord to minister to the sick. Extensively, all through these four weeks. Come with the sick. Come with those trusting the Lord for a new season. And ensure that no harm bill is remaining. Share all of them. Share all of them. No one... Ushers, no one should remain in your hand. You are not the custodian of handbills. If you have carried your own, give it out. Ensure everybody can have a lot. Some can carry three, four, five, depending on your level of influence. Are we together? Now, listen. You will also go online and share this on your all your social media handle. I was surprised somebody was in service last week. He said he never knew that I'm in massacre. He has been seeing our posts. How can you be in massacre and you don't know I'm here? Do I have to shout? Yay! <laughs> At least if that's what we have to do. You've been watching me online. You don't know I'm in massacre. Where do you think I am? In Lagos? No, I'm here. Say amen. <laughs> 
So, and it's your responsibility. Go and share all of the flyers. Share, disturb everybody. You know, see, see. These secular people know how to do advance more than us. Go and disturb everybody until they are tired of seeing it. Disturb them. Everybody around your area and locality will have to say, see, let me just go and even see what's happening. Say amen. Yes. So drag them, compel them, and let's trust God for massive harvest of souls in this season. Amen. Are we blessed tonight? Now please be on your feet with a shout of praise. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. The month of February has come to an end. When is the ending? Tomorrow, right? I pray that as we step into March, may you march forward. As you step into March, you will never be stagnated. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who are partners, I know you're already getting ready to make your commitment for the month of February. I pray that even before you make the commitment, may you see breakthroughs. May you see favors. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this is your season in Jesus' name. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. I love you and see you on Sunday.